Hi, my name is Reijo Linnola. I come from Finland and I have the honor to be one of the video judges for ESCR's 2014 video competition. We have seen over 200 plus videos and I would like to say some words about the video made by John Bina in India, the 10 commandments of PCR recognition and management. First, the good parts, of course. This video is eight minutes long and it uh, deals all the important issues related to PCR. It has a very good chronological order, for example, telling us first in which cases PCR might occur, and then it goes through all the steps in cataract surgery and shows what the problems might come in them. Some things might be added, of course. For example, for my personal approach in a small PCR rupture with a FACO tip, I like to use anterior chamber maintainer because it uh, helps and eases up uh, the taking out the rest part of the cortical remnants and also it in, uh, makes it much easier for us to implant the lens when the under and posterior capsule are detached from each other. Bimanual approach shown in this video is also good but it has not all the uh, applications as with under chamber maintainer. Improvement is always possible. When showing things in a video we need to see what is happening there in operation. This uh, video had very many clips, most possibly some of them were recorded with a camera with one CCD system. CCD in video camera is the thing which records the coming lights and then forms the picture. If we have one CCD camera, so then this one CCD is recording everything. Three CCD camera has three of them and then uh, each one of them records the main colors, red, blue and green. And this gives us enhanced resolution and lower noise. Sound editing, we can think uh, the speaker here, I like uh, she spoke very clearly, you can really understand and get the meaning. But then again, the music behind that was edited a little bit too high, it might be distracting. And then lastly, in conclusion, Dr. John Bina has managed to produce a very good educational video of posterior capsule rupture. I recommend you go and watch it. Thank you for listening. The authors do not have any financial interests to disclose. Posterior capsule rupture is a dreaded complication of cataract surgery. Posterior capsule rupture, if not managed effectively, can give rise to postoperative cystoid macular edema, retinal detachment and endophthalmitis. Early recognition, combined with advances in instrumentation, have enabled effective management of a posterior capsule tear. Posterior capsule tear can occur at any stage in cataract surgery from hydro dissection, during trenching, segment removal, cortex aspiration or IOL implantation. In this video, we present the 10 commandments which all FACO surgeons should follow in the management of a posterior capsule rupture so that we can give the best possible results to our patients. The first commandment is anticipation of a posterior capsule rupture so that the operating surgeons are adequately prepared to handle it. Posterior capsule ruptures are commonly seen in traumatic cataracts, post-vitrectomized eyes, posterior polar cataracts and in hard brown cataracts. The second commandment is recognition of a posterior capsular rupture. Signs of a PCR include a sudden deepening of the anterior chamber, loss of lens followability, pupil snap sign and tilting of the nuclear fragments.
the third commandment is not to panic when the surgeon recognizes a posterior capsule rupture and suddenly withdraw the phaco probe from the eye which will only lead to extension of the tear and the nuclear fragments sinking into the vitreous the fourth commandment is to inject high molecular weight viscoelastic through the side port so that the chamber is well formed with no further extension of the tear The fifth commandment is gentle withdrawal of the phaco probe from the eye after the chamber is well formed with viscoelastic. At this stage, the surgeon should calm himself, reassess the situation and plan on further management. The sixth commandment. If a PCR occurs during nucleus removal, the anterior chamber should be stabilized with viscoelastic and the situation assessed. If the nuclear fragments are still in the anterior chamber, they can be removed with the phaco probe after reducing all parameters. Nuclear fragment in the anterior vitreous can be removed by an experienced surgeon using posterior assisted levitation through the pars planar. If the nucleus has descended completely into the vitreous, further management requires a vitreoretinal surgeon. The seventh commandment is using bimanual irrigation and aspiration to remove the residual cortex. Using coaxial irrigation and aspiration will lead to hydration of the vitreous, increase in the size of the rent and further vitreous loss. The eighth commandment is to do a thorough anterior vitrectomy using bimanual techniques. Preservative free triamcinolone can be used to stain the vitreous in order to ensure that there is no vitreous in the anterior chamber or vitreous strands extending to the wound. The ninth commandment is to carefully assess the state of the capsule, both the anterior and the posterior. The final commandment is the decision regarding IOL implantation. A foldable IOL can be implanted into the bag if a small central PCR can be converted into a posterior capsulorexis. If there is adequate anterior capsule support, a foldable IOL can be placed in the sulcus. The options in the absence of good capsule support include iris fixated IOLs, glued intraocular lenses, suture assisted scleral fixated IOLs, and anterior chamber intraocular lenses. In conclusion, Our take home message is that following the 10 commandments ensures good visual outcomes to our patient. Summarizing the 10 commandments, we should anticipate posterior capsule rupture in traumatic cataracts, cataract post vitrectomy, posterior polar cataracts, brown cataracts and in eyes with pseudo exfoliation. Early signs of a PCR are loss of lens followability sudden deepening of the anterior and posterior chambers and pupil snap sign during hydro procedures management of a pcr includes injecting high molecular weight viscoelastic through the side port gently removing the probe from the eye reducing the bottle height appropriate management of the nucleus and using bimanual irrigation aspiration and vitrectomy after a thorough anterior vitrectomy The IOL can be placed in the bag, in the sulcus, glued IOL, scleral fixated sutured IOL, or an anterior chamber IOL, depending on the integrity of the capsule. Posterior capsule rupture, if managed properly, can give good postoperative results with 
a happy patient and a happy surgeon.